A lot of your RVs in the last decade or so have this solar on the side charging port or a little solar port on the side where you're supposed to plug in your solar panels. What a lot of them don't tell you though is that there is not a solar charge controller and you are not supposed to plug your solar panels directly into those things. Seems like the most obvious thing in the world to do to take a set of solar panels and plug them into that port, but that will cause some problems with your battery because there's nothing that's going to regulate the wild amounts of power that come from the solar panels into the specific amounts of power needed to properly charge and maintain a battery. So today I'm gonna to get you a solution for that. I have a little tiny solar charge controller that is going to fit directly inside of your foldable solar panel bag so that you can unfold them, get them set up, and get to charging that battery when you are off grid. Let's take a look at mine in particular. This is, if I can get it open, there we go. A little two pin connector so there's not much going on there just positive and negative i am sure but that is a very interesting connector i'll get you a link for that that's actually pretty expensive to make your own cables off of so we're going to skip past that and we're going to take a look down and underneath this is the back side of that connector and you can see a red wire and a black wire that come out and then they go into these two wire nuts here from there that turns into this wire here and this is red on one side and white on the other side, plus some age and sun fade and dirt and so forth. And it comes over here past this frame member right here. And you can kind of see it up in here a little bit. Let's see, right there is that wire. And then you can see it moving right there. So we move over to that side. So we have one wire that goes up and marries to the chassis for a ground and another wire that goes over here to a fuse. And then from the fuse, it goes to this bus bar right here. And we have another big fat wire here that comes down through the chassis and out to the battery. And you can see that that is red right there. So there is your positive wire on your battery. So basically all that thing does is run from here to this bus bar here, and then through here over to that connector on the outside over there. And that tells me something I already know anyway, because I've done solar and charge controller stuff before, which is why I'm here to share this with you. It basically is just an extension cable and plugs directly into the battery. So we're gonna bypass that whole works, and we're gonna plug directly into the battery with the solar panel set up for today. So let's see what's in the box and see what we need in order to connect to our solar panels on one side and our battery on the other side. Here is the battery box that we just took a look at from the underside of the RV. And inside I have a battery. Most of your batteries are gonna have these kinds of screw terminals. There's little caps on top of these to keep you all safe. A black one and a red one. And those are just M8 size bolts that screw into the battery. And there is that big red battery wire that we looked at from underneath. So this side's gonna be pretty easy. I have a set of alligator clip wires, or you can also get a set of M8 ring terminals and plug them directly into the charge controller. Okay, so that was the battery side of things, and this is going to be the solar panel side of things. This is a portable, foldable solar panel system from All Powers. And on the back side, there is a bag with all of the accessories, and what comes out of there are, well, besides some adapters that we don't need, what comes out of there is some MC4 connectors. So I have MC4 connectors on one side and battery terminals on the other side. And then with this, it's got a little feet on it, so you can set it up. as you unfold it and point it at the sunlight. And this is just a little dirty from getting back from using it at quartzite. So we'll get that cleaned up too. There we go. Here is our Bateria Power Sunrock 10 MPPT solar charge controller and this works for a 12 volt system at 10 amps of charge power. And the maximum input voltage from the solar panel is 30 and the maximum solar panel wattage is 150 watts. So as long as your system is within those parameters, this will work out really well for you. There is a Bluetooth app, we'll take a look at that. There is some wiring diagrams. I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up and show you how it's done here. And then there is the user manual. 
This is a perfect size little controller to go inside of your foldable solar panel bag so that it is always there when you need it and you are ready to roll. They sell this with a couple of different ends on it. This one happens to have SAE connectors and they were nice enough to give you some SAE pigtails and an SAE polarity adapter because as you can see, this one here is red to the bare wire and this one here is black to the bare wire. So you always got to be careful of what your polarity is. And so whenever I'm messing around with something like this, I have a very simple multimeter with me that I use to check polarity. And we'll do that when we get outside and get things connected. But for now, the way I work on my solar systems is I convert everything over to what's considered power poles, which you have on the back of the solar panel that I showed you outside is some MC4 connectors. And then these are Anderson power pole connectors, and these can only fit together one way. And then on the battery side of things, I'm going to use a set of alligator clips like this on one end and a power pole on the other end. And like I said, you can't take the solar side of things and plug it directly into the battery side of things, even if it does fit, because the battery wants a specific kind of voltage and the solar panel puts out as much voltage as it can possibly give you because it's trying to be really nice. And that is where you need something like this in the middle. So I got to get these ends here cut off and I got to get some new ends put on and we will take care of that right now. So I'm going to need some tools for that. This is a set of crimpers that will allow me to crimp on the connectors for the power poles. This is a wire stripper wire cutter that will allow me to cut and strip wire. And then this is a kit full of power pole connectors and ends and all kinds of things. So let me get this stuff here all squared away. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off this nice connector that they gave us. Gone. So satisfying. And gone. I'm going to get one more tool here to make my life easy and neat and clean. And that is a pair of very flush precision type wire cutters. And I'm just cutting the jacket between the wire to separate the two of these guys. And then next up, we need to strip back maybe about a quarter of an inch. And that's where these come in handy. These are nice and easy for stripping wire. Put your terminal on top. I might have stripped off a bit too much wire there. That's okay. We'll take off some extra. crimped and then your red and black sides slide together like so and I put these in I call these spoons because they look a little bit like spoons but the spoons hook downwards and then I use that hook downwards to put into the end of the connector in an also hooking downward fashion and then it goes in and snaps into place like that you can hear it click that's how you know it's all the way in so here we go two clicks that one's good to go one more down. I'll get that one done off camera and then we'll be right back. So for connecting to the battery side, I have a set of alligator clips and they go to a set of power poles on one end. Let's get those plugged in. Red to red, black to black. And we're safe on this end because there's no way to get those two connected without really shoving something in there seriously. On the solar panel side of things, we've got MC4 connectors. And again, I've got those adapted out to power poles so I can use them with my systems. So let's get these plugged in. Plug that in there. Plug that in there. And same thing. It's nice and safe because you'd have to shove something pretty hard in there. And then I'm going to use my multimeter to check polarity. So I'm going to set this to the 20 range on volt DC. And I'm going to set my slide switch over to volt DC. It looks like a line with three dots underneath of it instead of a wavy line. The V with a wavy line is alternating current. And you can see it can't figure anything out because I got nothing plugged in. So I'm going to take my red probe and my black probe and I'm going to marry red to red and black to black. 
There you go, you can see it says 20 volts are coming out of the solar panel, which is way more than you'd need to charge a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is about 14 volts, 14.4, 14.8 volts, depending on your system. But there is no negative sign there, so we know that we've got the polarity hooked up properly here. On our solar charge controller, there is a sun side here. There's a little embossed icon that looks like a sun with some sun rays coming down, and on the other side, there is a battery icon, which looks like a battery with a lightning bolt in it. So I'm going to take the power pole connector from the solar panel and the power pole connector from the charge controller and I'm going to connect those two together. And we've got power. From here I want to change my settings because it's set for a gel battery and I'm using a lithium iron phosphate battery. So I'm going to hold in the set button and it starts to blink. Press the set button again, AGM. Press it one more time and it says LIFEPO. And then I'm going to long press that button again to confirm my choice. And now we've got it confirmed. And it's telling me there is an E01, which is probably saying, I ain't got no battery there. So let's get a battery on it. But before we do that, let's check the polarity on this side to make sure that this red and this black is actually red and black like it's supposed to be. And we're putting out 14 volts positive. So we're good to go on this side also. And now that I have it plugged in to the battery, you can see that the battery's at 13.7 volts and we're putting 0.9 amps into the battery. And you can see the top lights are showing me that the battery is 75% full at least, and it is giving it its last little bit of charge to get it to 100%. So depending on your sunlight is how long that's gonna take. Now here comes the fun part. I wanna get this thing configured by cell app so I can monitor it without having to walk outside and take a look at those blinking lights all the time. And maybe we'll get some more information out of the solar app than we will out of the front panel display. There is a Android QR code for the Charge Pro 2.0 app. And there is an iPhone QR code for the Charge Pro 2.0 app. I am on an Android, so I'm gonna scan that in. All right, it says Play Store link. So I'm gonna click on the Play Store link and then we can install the Charge Pro 2.0 app and open it up. Ooh, there's a privacy policy that is so small that I can't even read it. We'll just go ahead and accept that. At the top right corner, there is a Bluetooth icon. So you click that and it asks if you would like to allow Charge Pro 2.0 to find, connect, and determine the relative position of nearby devices. So I'm gonna say allow, and then let's look for something that looks like it might be our device. And I see something here called Charge Pro. This is the fun thing about being in an RV park. There's lots and lots of Bluetooth devices around here tire pressure monitor systems, cameras, backup cameras, people's entire RVs. I'm gonna to connect to this one called Charge Pro. And here we go. So it's telling me the system voltage is at 14.2 volts, the state of charge. The solar input, we're getting 18.4 volts. Its status is boost. So it is taking the maximum power point it can get from the sun and boosting it up to give you 18.4 volts, which then gets translated into the second group there, the battery. The battery is receiving 4.63 amps. It is getting 14.2 volts and we're shoving 65 watts of power into it. The controller is at 27 degrees Celsius and it's normal. And then we have some historical data, which we just turned it on, so there's not much, but a little bit. So we went from no power at all yesterday to today with lots of power. And the yellow spike that goes straight up is max charge power. The purple is lowest battery voltage. The blue is accumulative charge amount, and the green is discharge amount, which we haven't done any discharging. And then there's some settings in here, which are locked, so can we unlock it? Confirm unlock settings, confirm. And then I can make some changes here. Looks like we can change the boost charge voltage, the over discharge recovery voltage, the over discharge voltage, the light control delay time, or the light control voltage which I didn't see any light control. So this is probably more of a generic app that will work with anything out there. Your system voltage choice at the top is 12 only and your battery type is flooded, sealed lead acid, gel, lithium ion, or user. So we're gonna stick with lithium ion and we're gonna hit confirm. And now those changes have been saved. What I would like to see on this is a password protection feature. That way nobody can come up and be changing my settings without my knowledge or permission. So we'll go back to real-time monitoring and now I can take a look and I can see when my battery is fully charged. Solar power systems do not need to be that intimidating. You need a solar panel, you need a charge controller, and you need a battery. The solar panel will collect the energy from the sunlight 
and feed it to the charge controller. The charge controller will convert it from the wildly up and down current that comes from the sun into something steady that your battery can understand. And then your battery will store it so that you can use it later on to power your furnace or charge up your cell phones or watch your TVs or keep your internet going or whatever it is that you need to keep you out of the dark. I will leave some links in the description down below for all the tools that I showed you in the video today, as well as the solar panel that works well with this charge controller, this charge controller, and the battery that I use on the front tongue of my RV. That battery will get me a good 24 hours of runtime without the solar panel. And then with the solar panel and some good sunlight, I won't need to change the battery or change anything else. And my RV runs a 12 volt refrigerator and the 12 volt DC propane furnace and all the lights and keeps all of my goodies all charged up. If you like RV tips and tricks, this is the channel for you. Be sure you are subscribed. If you have any questions on solar systems or charge controllers or batteries, make sure you leave a comment in the description down below. There is a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. I'll see you over there.